haven't put out anything in two months, and you're going, uh, well, Harold, uh, I guess we'll just click subscribe and see if he comes back. Greetings, Earthlings and Frag Commies. My name is Luke. You're back. I'm back. And we're looking at each other through this, this screen, this mind hole, porthole, uh, other science fiction -y stuff. We're talking about fall fragrances, not just any uh, fall fragrance video, but the top 10 fall fragrances guaranteed. It's to click on this video. You know, other reviewers uh, try to use clickbait and, and, and make empty promises, saying uh, top 10 fragrances to get you noticed. In my mind, I wouldn't sign up for that because there's a plenty of people I, I notice I, I would not want to smell. Other uh, YouTubers are like top 10 fragrances guaranteed to drive her crazy. I mean, first off, mental illness is no joke. Second off, do we really want to drive your girl crazy when she's got that look in her eye because she told you to take out the trash for the third time and, and you're on the, the fourth level of, of Mario? Do people still play Mario? So starting off the list at number 10 is a fragrance that I really wish I wore more often, but I find myself not wearing it quite nearly enough. And that is Terre de Hermes by Hermes, a, 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 a legend in men's perfumery, changed the game. It is a very vetiver forward fragrance with some earthiness in that and some orange citrus. It does smell kind of like an earthy orange peel. Some of you out there that are uh, younger might find this one to be a little bit more gentlemanly or old school but you know those kind of fragrances really float my boat so i really do like this one why don't i wear it as much as i do i don't i don't know i i do know that one time years ago i was substituting a fifth grade class and a little girl told me i stunk like an orange i haven't recovered i guess from that so next up on the list is is hypnos ohm by lancome this one does not get nearly enough attention in the community. And now I will sniff it uh, like Knoll's frags. Both the cap and the nozzle for uh, double nostril penetration, I guess. That's what we're talking about here. This is a fragrance that uh, is probably going to be more on that sophisticated, gentlemanly, slightly old school, but very well blended, almost kind of leaning a bit towards the niche, even though Lancome is a niche. So all you niche heads out there be going, ah, ah, he said Lancome's niche. <laughs> In the opening, you kind of get this like woodsy, light, almost almond-like note, even though almond is not a listed note. And then it kind of dries down to this creamy, sweet, ambery base. This is one of my favorites to wear out on the date, or if you've got an important meeting and you really want to seem sophisticated and refined, this one is one of my go-tos. Next up on the list is, is probably my favorite cheapie of all time, and that's Lalique Encre Noir. This is vetiver at its darkest. If this is the bad boy of the bunch. It is vetiver, it is dank, it is dark. This is perfect for the fall, especially around this Halloween type of, uh, of, of time. And this, this time we, we've got Halloween and we've got a full moon. So careful out there, it's scary. Next up on the list is my favorite flanker in the Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Mans line. That's Jean-Paul Gaultier, Essence de Parfum. That's really how you have to say the name or else you're just not living your best life. This is a sweet leather and cardamom scent. Goes really well in the fall time when the air is cooling down a little bit and, and really kind of gives you, I don't know, I just kind of get like this uh, sophisticated librarian book bound kind of leather with a little bit of cardamom and a little bit of sweetness and some spice. Don't know where that came from. Coming in at number five, halfway through the list is, is Burberry London for him. This at one point was a signature scent of mine. It was the scent that I wore on the first date with my wife. Although after that date, uh, she kind of uh, wanted to pump the brakes on the whole thing. So it's, 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 it's hit or miss, but you know, uh, we sealed the deal in the end. So, take your chances. This has been called 
Christmas in a bottle. I can see that. I think I prefer to wear this one more around the Thanksgiving holiday season. Uh, but this is a great one. It is cinnamon tobacco, has a port wine accord. One of my all time favorite fragrances. It's down on this list a little bit just because I did wear it quite a bit in my mid to late 20s. And so I just kind of wear different things by now, but this one you cannot go wrong with. Next up on the list in the number four spot is Hugo Boss Bottled Oud. I am not a huge fan of the Oud. Maybe at some point in my uh, fragrance journey, I might be. But this one to me just smells like a really nice polished leather. And leather is my favorite note in fragrances. And this one is very professional. It has a leather note, but it's not going to be a challenging leather, such as maybe a, a Tuscan leather. This is going to be very put together, very posh, very handsome. The projection and longevity on this one is quite beast mode on my skin. But I know other people that, that say that they, they don't get great performance or projection with this one. All I can say to that is a lot of people out there do drugs, so. Next up on the list is a discontinued fragrance, but you can still find it on discounters here and there. That's how I picked up this one. Davidoff Leather Blend. Continuing on that leather theme, this is probably the most polished, nice, authentic leather accord or note in my collection. And these two are very similar. This one you can still find, uh, probably about the $70, $60 mark, somewhere in there. This one is going to be a little bit more expensive because it is discontinued. So if you don't want to try to find this one, or if you can't find this one, go with the Oud because they're very close. It's like 1A, 1B. This one is a very put together, polished suede kind of leather. Has some spice to it, good projection, good longevity. This one is a compliment puller, and that's sometimes tough to do with a fragrance that deals with that leather note because it can be so divisive. But this one, I'm really happy I added to my collection. Give it a chance if you see it on one of those discount sites. This next fragrance I've talked about several times on my channel. It's Mugler Pure Havan. Back in the Ozarks, we'd call this something like Mugler Pure Haven. I am not a fan of the super sugary sweet fragrances. This one is probably as sweet as I like to go as far as men's fragrances on the sweet end of the spectrum it is honey and tobacco and so much sweetness in fact that it kind of does at times have this cherry tobacco vibe even though cherry is not a listed note. I definitely get honey. At times I kind of pick up that cherry vibe. This is a great tobacco fragrance. And dare I say, probably my most complimented fragrance in my collection. I can't remember a time when I, I wore this and, and someone didn't say, oh my gosh, what are you wearing? Not that you guys necessarily care about compliments, but I know my boy, Nigel, across the pond. Shout out to Two Cents Worth. Check out his live streams. He's really good. Coming in at the number two spot is my favorite designer fragrance of all time. Gucci, guilty, absolute. And so now you're thinking, well, if it's uh, not number one, then why is it your favorite fragrance of all time? Why don't you shut up, viewer, and let me explain. This is a fragrance that I wear for me. It's not a crowd pleaser. It is not a fragrance that will pull compliments. It is not an easy fragrance to fall in love with. It is dry, woody, leathery, kind of a sharp medicinal oud off the top. But to me, I really enjoy the way I feel when I wear this. I feel confident. I feel handsome. It kind of invokes to me the memories of working in my dad's wood shop growing up. And that's the kind of leather, wood, dirtiness that I kind of smell in this one. And it's not for everyone, and it's very polarizing. But to me, this is my number one fall fragrance. But since you guys out there don't necessarily like it, I have another fall fragrance that's much more palatable. Prada Loam Intense. This is a fragrance that if I had to choose out of my collection, one fragrance to wear to work every day during the fall, it would be this guy. Simply because I really enjoy the way I feel when I wear it and other people tend to really enjoy it on me. This is a fragrance that is leathery, spicy, handsome, classy, posh. 
It is not the most affordable designer out there, but it is a very affordable fragrance compared to some of the others on the list. Performance, projection, great. I can get through an entire school day, which is eight to nine hours wearing this guy. It is a fragrance that is way more universally appealing than the Gucci Guilty Absolute, but perhaps not as interesting to the fragments out there, let's just say. That is going to wrap things up for me today, Frag Commies. Thank you for joining me in this uh, top 10 most guaranteed something about fall fragrances video. I will try to not wait another two months before making another video, although we have an election next week, and if someone gets elected over someone else, then poop might hit the spitty blade things attached to the ceiling. And that, you know, I actually, I might do more videos if that happens uh, because I'll want to stay indoors.